Hi everyone, and I am here with my Victober 2023 TBR. Welcome everyone. Oh, I am delighted to be sitting with you and telling you about the books that I am hoping to read this upcoming Victober. And I think like many of you Victober, Victober regulars, I started planning my TBR as soon as Victober ended last year. And it is, isn't it the most fun project to constantly go back and be tweaking it and thinking about it? No, actually, I think this book would be better suited and just fine tuning it, knowing precisely uh, what you want to read and then agonizing over actually, were those the right decisions? It's just fun to make an event out of every single aspect of Victober. Uh, so that being said, I am just over the moon to be uh, telling you about this. So the first one that I want to read, or I'm gonna go through the prompts, that's what I will do. So for Book with an Outsider, which was my prompt, I picked the group read, The Way We Live Now by Anthony Trollope. I am so excited to get stuck into a 1,000 page Anthony Trollope. Um, I don't know, you know, by the time that Victober starts, I may have already started The Way We Live Now because I am panicking at the fact that I have two ginormous Victorian books that I have picked that are on my TBR. And I did this to myself. I was, I was the one who suggested the way we live now as the group read. And then everyone was like, yes, that's a great idea. So I, I brought this on myself. Um, we're gonna see how this goes. Okay, then the next one, the next prompt is read a first person narrative. And I have two that I have picked for this. So the first is I'm going to be reading some of Charlotte Mary Young's letters. So uh, people have very generously taken the time to put her letters online. And I just thought, you know what? I have several tomes. I could take it more easy with this one. And um, yeah, just, I don't know, be, give myself some breathing room. And I would love to, I just feel like I would love her the more that I get to know, know her, like I did with Elizabeth Gaskell's letters. And um, yeah, I will just, I'm, I'm very excited to dive into these, make it a very long-term project. I think I'm going to make an Excel spreadsheet and organize it by year and check off what I've read each year. Um, keep track of it that way. The website has it organized very well, organized by year and then specifically by month. And they also give you some biographical information with each of the dates. So to give you kind of a context for what was happening in her life. And I just think I'm going to really adore her the more that I get to know her. Um, now, the second choice that I have for this is uh, an author that was referenced at, in a sermon illustration at my church. And the author's name is George Matherson. And he was a Scottish minister and he, um, in his time at seminary, he was engaged and then he started to become blind. And when his fian when he told his fiance this, she broke up with him and he never married, but he was a very influential minister and he has several devotional books. And I just thought that could be a really lovely way to start each day in Victober. I know that some people have read Charles Spurgeon's uh, Morning and Evening. Some people were, were reading that last year. Um, and so I want to read Moments on the Mount by George Matherson. Uh, so they look to be just, they take one verse and then it's a little paragraph. So this seems like it could be a really easy thing to get through, but I am also, it's not my goal to finish it by the end of October. It's not something that I feel like I want to rush through. Just enjoy it and savor it and, um, yeah, it just seems like it could be a really lovely kind of breath of fresh air in my Victober reading. Okay, the next prompt was Marissa's prompt, a new to you author. And I have selected Miss Miles, A Tale of Yorkshire Life 60 Years Ago by Mary Taylor. 
I have not read anything by Mary Taylor, and I'm very much looking forward to trying this. Ever since Jenna from Chicky Bean Loves Books talked about this book last year during October, she just made it sound so interesting. I hadn't heard anyone else speak about it, and I'm very much looking forward to reading this. This is one I am planning on reading over the course of the month. Um, because there is some dialect that can be hard to get through. And I also don't have this on Kindle. So this is one, you know, I'll have to sit with my book. Can't uh, be laying, you know, laying in bed in the early hours when it's dark, uh, reading on my Kindle, you know, won't listen to it while I'm doing other tasks. Uh, so I'm looking forward to really just taking my time with this and savoring it and giving myself the space and time to fall in love with it. And it is not ginormous. So it's under... Um, 500 pages and four Victorian novels that is on the shorter side. And how many chapters does it have? It would be just absolutely lovely if it um, was e could be divided evenly by 31. Oh, but it looks like there's less than 31 chapters. So I think maybe I'll try for a chapter a day. Yeah, I think that's what I will do. Uh, Morning Spread Upon the Mountains is the name of the last chapter. This sounds poetic and beautiful, and I am very excited. I hope there's some beautiful nature imagery. The next prompt is a book where class features strongly, and I'm also going to be using the group read of The Way We Live Now for this one. So very excited to get stuck in, and I am going to be doing the David Shaw Parker audiobook. I know that Timothy West um, has done the, the Audible one, but David Shaw Parker is who I started out Anthony Trollope with, and any audiobook that he narrates, I'm just automatically going to be uh, drawn to that one. I just, he is the voice of Trollope to me. Uh, so I, I'm just so excited for this. Okay, then um, the new woman prompt created by none other than Katie Lumsden of Books and Things fame. Um, and I'm going to be reading... Um, Oh wait, I just realized I have a try a chapter tag that's coming out during October. So I have four books that I was very divided on and couldn't make up my mind for Katie's prompt. It's so funny because I kind of went into it, not even sure if I was interested in anything. And then after watching Katie's announcement video, I was like, oh my goodness, no, I have these four books that I would be interested in. So I'm just gonna be cheeky and you can see the try a chapter tag, which I'll make come out October 2nd, um, and you can see it then to find out what I picked for that. Okay, um, then on my Patreon, we are going to be reading a book together and another chunker, and it is, let's see, 642 pages. So this is why I'm a little bit concerned about the amount that I have, um, and that is Man and Wife. I am so excited to be reading this. It blew my mind last October, and I already felt ready to read it again um, this October. And so we voted between, I think it was four or five titles, um, and this is the one that got selected. Uh, so cannot wait for this. This is going to be a lot of fun. And I'm excited too because we're going to meet halfway through the month to discuss the first half of the book, and then we'll have a final book discussion right at the end of the month. Uh, so my Patreon is linked down below if you're feeling a hankering for diving in, you know, more um, and having more kind of social aspects to Victober. If not, totally fine. My videos will be here for you. Um, this is just an extra thing there if anyone is interested. Okay, then I have a buddy read going. And this is a really special buddy read. So I am venturing through a 1,000 page Charlotte Mary Young book called The Pillars of the House. Uh, the family in this, there are 13 children, and this is just very lauded by Charlotte Mary Young fans. Uh, so I put out an inquiry on Instagram and got some friends to agree to join me, got some church friends to agree to join me, and um, we're going to be, we started in September. So we're doing the first half in September, second half in October. We're meeting every other Tuesday night on Zoom to talk about it. We have a Voxer chat, and it's just making my heart so full that I'm getting to read Charlotte Mary Young with friends. Um, so absolutely delightful and I'm really loving the four chapters that I have read. So it has all the makings of a great Charlotte Mary Young novel. Uh, okay, then I am hosting the 1860s book club where you pick any book published between 1860 and 1869 and you come to the book club and you talk about it. Uh, so it's a book club where we, a lot of us will have read something different. Maybe a couple people will overlap. 
I've never done something like this before. I'm hoping it's going to be fun. Um, I will list my email down below if you missed the announcement video and you would like to take part in the 1860s book club. And so I have two things planned for that. So the first is Enoch Arden and Other Poems by Alfred Lord Tennyson. After reading and just adoring Idols of the King, I want to read more narrative poetry by him. And I was very much swayed. I was looking at the different poems that he, you know, collections. And this one, uh, there is an audiobook narrated by Patrick Stewart available on Spotify. So that completely and utterly swayed me. Um, then I am going to be reading this fairy tale collection, The Fairy Book, which is translated by Dinah Crake. Um, I think they're all Charles Perrault's fairy tales, but I could do with some whimsy in my TBR. And I'm hoping this will bring the whimsy. Now I will say, if I just have a time, a magical time turner, I also really had my hopes up that I would be rereading Dombey and Son this Victober. It would be extremely cozy. I read it my very first Victober. I'm very nostalgic about it, and I've been wanting to reread it for a while. So I just don't know. Um, but we'll see. Now, the other two that I am planning on, and these are going to be read alouds with my sons, um, and I cannot wait. So the first is I showed in a book haul last week, um, The Light Princess. Uh, by George MacDonald. This story is so beautiful and just packed full of meaning and truth, beauty, and goodness, and I want them to experience it with me. It's something that has, uh, you know, truth there for children and truth there for adults, and I just want to experience it with them. And then the story that I fell in love with last year as well, and that was The Little Lame Prince by Dinah, uh, Dinah Mullet Creek. And it also has And the Adventures of a Brownie. Uh, so this one has a decent number of illustrations, pretty much I feel like an illustration on almost every other page, some color illustrations too, uh, and then some just black and white sketches. Uh, so yeah, The Little Lame Prince and the Adventures of a Brownie. So I think this could be really, really fun. And it looks like, then there's a third story. Yes, that's what I thought it was. There's a third story called The Invisible Prince. Um, so we'll see how much I'm actually able to read aloud to them. Uh, because we do also have some historical fiction books for American history that we're getting through. I'll just try to balance and strike a good balance between the two of those. Um, and then I did want to tell you briefly, I have some Halloween plans, some Halloween reading plans I wanted to let you know about. So they aren't all exclusively Victorian, but the one that I didn't do last year and I want to do this year is a reread of The Canterville Ghost. Uh, by Oscar Wilde. I love that story. I think it is, it's like precisely my kind of spooky for Halloween. I think Halloween is the most fun when it's spooky and not sinister. And I just love the Canterville ghost. Um, then a Edgar Allan Poe story that I've been meaning to read for years. And then Mitzi from Mitzi Reads and Writes was talking about it in a kind of fall uh, reading recommendations video. And that is The Fall of the House of Usher. Um, and I have never read this story, and I think I could also fit it in on actual Halloween. Um, and then secondly, I like to, most Victobers close out Victober, like when Victober is done, when I've just kind of, I'm very satiated with Victorian literature, or even sometimes in the middle, if I need a break, is read an Agatha Christie. So I have two that I'm torn between, and the first is... Um, a Murder is Announced, and I want to read this one because it is set in October. Um, it is a Miss Marple, and I will let myself cheat. I've been saying I'm going to finish the Poirot series, minus Curtain. I'm never reading Curtain. Um, but I have just decided, just do what you want with your reading life. Um, and then the next one is Endless Night. Um, so I... I'm torn between the two. I'm not sure which one I am going to pick. Uh, but then, uh, talking with a church friend the other day, and she was talking about the Septimus Heap series by Angie Sage, which is supposed to be, uh, it's like a really great children's fantasy series, and I feel like that could be cozy and autumnal, but she also has a, um, I can't remember the name of the characters, but it's, uh, uh it's kind of a, what do I want, Hotel Transylvania, like, kind of like that feel to it. And the first one is called My Haunted House. And it's supposed to be charming and 
I'm hoping like the Worst Witch series by Jill Murphy. Um, so those are kind of my Halloween reading plans. I like to have exciting things to look forward to when Victober is done, right? We need to have some good things to look forward to. Oh my goodness. So that was a lot of information to go through. Thank you if you stuck with me this long and I am just thinking it's going to be the best Victober ever. This is a, a, a kind of modest TBR for me and I'm hoping that's okay. I'm hoping that's a good thing. Sometimes I need backups, but I have a whole list of, you know, Victorian books that I'm interested in. So I can just take a look at that list, but it just kind of, I feel like these are the ones that I wanted to read this, this year. These are the ones that I'm in the mood for. And I'm really hoping I have some winners here and three rereads between The Way We Live Now, Man and Wife. Um, and then if I was to magically get to, um, Dombey and Son, but also The Little Lame Prince and The Light Princess. So I'm hoping a good mixture here. Let me know if you have read and enjoyed any of these. And I think the next video you'll see from me is going to be on Victober 1st. So have a lovely rest of your day, everyone. And I'll be back with a Victober video before you know it. Bye.